you had this report um, from the jail about for Matthew. Mm -hmm. Well, they reviewed, and uh, there is no reasonable cause to believe that she has okay. uh, an issue. I, but I've talked about it. I, in some cases, okay. I, I just can't see any issues. <laughs> Seventeen dash two eight zero five three is now called Kristen Nicole Massey. That's you. Yes. Yes, sir. Present with Mr. West, your attorney and the state's attorney. There appears to be a motion to revoke probation filed December 6, 2022. And what are we going to do today? In 11, the five grounds failing to report, failing to immediately report your address. I don't understand that. Uh, no, does I that did, change your address? I would, like to, I would like to insert, make an oral amendment on number two. Uh, after the word her and in between the word address on the second line, insert change of. Okay, number three, we'll get back to that in a minute. Yes, Failed sir. Provide form of community service. Failed to submit to alcohol drug screenings. Uh -huh. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Hmm. And then failing to pay. Well, all of those are fine. They can be maybe fixable. original, because I gave it two ways. Are you going to do all the talking or do I get a chance to control the proceedings? What goes on in the back back there? Do y'all just talk about how you're going to control the whole hearing? No, the court does. Is that all right if I do that? Since that's what the law says I should do. Okay. You'll be given a chance to speak. Relax. All right. What are we going to do? Uh, number one, there's a change, an amendment. That's been moved. Her a change of address. No objection. Number two to be added. Change of inserted by before address. Okay. That is amended without objection today. Now what? Does she waive formal readings of these? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, does the defendant waive a formal reading of this motion to revoke probation? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, sir. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or as best you can uh, swear or affirm that the statements you're going to be making during this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you guys. Lower your hand. In summary, this motion to revoke probation in 1728053 filed on December 6, 2022, alleges. That on January 27th, 2020, you were sentenced to 10 years in prison, probated for 10 years for tampering with physical evidence. Is that true? Yes, sir. One state you failed to report to the Jefferson County Probation Office for the months of July, August, September, and October of 2022. Is that true or untrue? Uh, yes, sir. True? True. Okay. Two. You failed to immediately report to the probation office your change of address. Doesn't say what day that happened, but it had to be sometime I mean, after. Was, she told me that. I mean, I'm sorry. I was talking once day. again. Same. Okay, so I say so. This <laughs> shouldn't be that confusing. I was just trying to press it. Are you through now? Is that true? Yes. You're gonna is that is that your third? Okay. Number two, let's take this over again without interruption. You failed to immediately report to the probation office your change of address in violation of your probation order. Is that true? Yes. In all fairness to you, it doesn't show a date, mm -hmm. but it had to be, I guess, after you were placed on probation in January of 2020. May 4th, 2022. Ma'am. May the 4th of 2022. All right. So now a mail letter returned to us stamped from the post office on delivery. You want to put that in on the date, uh, the date on that allegation for clarification? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put after her name, the said Kristen Nicole Massey, comma, on what? May 4th, 2022.
comma. And so that's the, that's amended twice on that one. It says that you on May 4th, 2022, failed to immediately report to the probation office your change of address in violation of your probation order. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Three, you failed to provide verification of performing community service hours as required of you. Is that true? Do you know? No, you, you please sure that we go back. Okay, yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh, four, you failed to submit to alcohol or drug screenings on June 9th, July 6th, July 8th, July 14th, July 20th, July 21st, and August 1st. Yes, those are true. 2022 and follow the recommended treatment plan yes, in violation of your probation order. Is that true? Yes, sir. And finally, five, you failed to pay court assessed fees as directed as of November 17, 2022. You were in arrears $3,290. Is that true? Yes, sir. Let me ask you this. Were you able to pay any of that? I did pay. No, no, no. The, the amount that you were in arrears, were those monies that you, some of which or all of which you could have paid, but you just elected not to? Or did you That's not me. have any That's money? You didn't have any yes, money? Sir. Okay, we're going to skip that. Sure. We'll skip that. Are you pleading true to allegations then one, two, three, and four yes, of sir. this motion to revoke probation voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because those are true? Do you understand by pleading true that is enough? A voluntary and knowing being true to a violation of probation is enough to grant this motion to revoke proba probation. Your probation can be revoked by a preponderance of the evidence or greater, and you can be then sentenced. You're on regular probation. You're looking at no less than two nor more than 10 years confinement in prison. Yes. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? I find you are pleading true voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading truth. Okay. Mr. West, you may go first. Uh, Your Honor, I want to call my client to testify to get some testimony. Okay, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Warren. Kristen, uh, we, we talked a, bit, a little bit about uh, uh, these allegations at the jail. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Not, okay. Let's we'll talk about that. First one is not checking in. You uh, stopped checking at some point, didn't you? I did. Okay. Tell the judge why. You told me why, but I want you to tell the judge why you stopped checking in. What happened? Well, this was uh, well, the first students. Second time, when I was reinstated, as far as I'm right, right. Oh, when I was reinstated, I stopped checking in because I didn't feel like I was going to meet the requirements for the program that they were asking me to um, participate in. I didn't have a vehicle and I was struggling to get to work and home. And it was going to be like a counselor. Um, I had to see my probation officer and then I had to do NA meetings and I had to be at, you know, on colors, which it, the UA wasn't a problem. It was just finding a ride, you know, in the middle of the day or whenever to get there. And then I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it. And I didn't want to um, miss, um, you know, uh, what is it called? Like not show up and then me show up to report and then them have me put me in jail, you know, and I just, I just quit reporting. So I tried to get them to change it. I asked them if we could do something else. But I even talked hold to her supervisor. Yes. Hold on for just a second. Let me. Hmm. Okay, here we go. This is the Manson family. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're part of what we call it the Manson family from Nederland. The, uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Y'all were in a group of people who were kind of living in a, or hanging around this this abandoned home. Uh, one of the members is shot and killed. And then y'all or each each take turns in shooting the body. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember no, this I like it was yesterday. Are you going to interrupt me? Everybody took a shot. It, it took a turn. I didn't it, sorry, but I couldn't. You're going to get a chance to speak. Everybody got a turn. And then it was carried up. And and uh, buried, and then a game camera caught the people, caught one, and then it, one led to another and to another. And so you were in that group of people where all of that happened. Now, whether you shot or not, you were involved in discarding the body. And we call 
we refer to that as the Manset family because it was kind of like what the Manset family did. A group of people got together and and but you were present when the when the person was shot. Yes, yeah. And everybody was given the gun to fire into the body. I, I whether you whether you agree or not, that's what the pre-sentence report said. I'm not saying you killed the person. The no, person was already killed. I didn't do that. Though. I did not fire. I didn't touch. Did you commit the crime that you're on probation for? Yes, sir. Of trying to dispose of the dead, the four dead body, well, so that it would never be found, right? I mean, that's that's yes, what sir. this says. You did plead guilty to it. Come on. Sir, you're, you're correct. No, I think no way just, that I'm just. Here's what I wrote. You pleaded guilty to. On or about May 24th of 2017, knowing that murder had been committed, you intentionally or knowingly destroyed or concealed a human corpse with the intent to impair its identification and availability as evidence in any subsequent investigation or official proceeding related to the offense. But the point is, is you didn't alert people to it. They caught y'all and they caught you on a fluke of a situation where somebody walked past the game camera who was involved and was identified. And then that led to the identification of everybody else. You know, I think her issue is that, that the allegation that she shot into the body, I don't think, I think she, that meant she didn't do that, but I think she, she did plead guilty to help hide the body and then that part, which is what she was involved in. I think it just bothers her having to the fact that she the body was not something she did. The Tyler County Sheriff says Robertson was shot several times in Jefferson County in May. His body was then dumped and burned on County Road 4600 in Fred. Robertson's brother says these five men called themselves Brandon's friends. Now Jacob Arrington, Scott Ford, James Pratt and Thomas Swafford are charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence. Jeremy Arrington is charged only with tampering with evidence and a sixth suspect is being sought. All are sitting in Jasper, Jefferson and Tyler County jails. Family members say Robertson was taking his life in a better direction. And Tyler County Sheriff Brian Weatherford says some of the defendants have confessed to the crime and he believes a sixth arrest will come soon. In the studio, Troy Kless, 12 News. Okay, pre-sentence report. Everyone there at the house everyone there uh, the boyfriend handed the, your boyfriend, right? That Was that him? Who was the main man who yeah, shot? Was it? I mean, you could call him that. Okay, so I just go out there here. Did you call this is your really version. Her, this like, is your version. <clears throat> you were dating a person who was bad news. They were at your house that you were working that you were working on construction wise. A couple of other guys at the house that were there were friends of <clears throat> her boyfriend. You went outside and put some wood on the fire, came back and before you reached the room. They were all in. You heard a loud pop. You walked into the room. One of the guys is laying on the ground with a huge hole in his head. I mean, this was there were several people here. It wasn't just two or three. The boyfriend is holding the gun. Let's see. Uh, with the exception, uh, everyone there was scared to death with, with, with what had just happened with the exception of one. The boyfriend handed the gun around, telling them to shoot the dead body at least once. However, you didn't have to. No one asked you to. Then over the next couple of days, you and others moved the body to Fred and burned it. Yes. I think that's something. Substantially what had happened here. It's a terrible thing. Well, who does? Who gets involved in something like that?
problem here in your particular situation is you were using drugs apparently at the time then you said oh, your life has improved for the better now that you were drug free and in a healthy relationship and so drugs well as many times are part of the problem but you know that and and that's why we put you on probation i don't i think you were the only one who got placed on probation that's, this whole that's week. correct judge because every it was a, a, just a straight from hell mm -hmm. itself that whole episode that's just terrible stuff and it reminds you of the manson family you're, so you're, you were given probation and given a chance and I'm sure I probably scolded you and lectured you about, don't let me see you back, back here again. Drugs are a problem. So quite naturally, you have now pleaded true to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attempts to drug screen you. I just said quit recording. So the, all the drug screens that were in that time period. I'm allowed to talk? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that's what much time? Is. I didn't just refuse, I just didn't, I wasn't going to go Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let's talk about the uh, community service. That is one of the allegations, right? I mean, Pardon me? service. There's one of the allegations community services. Yes. I, I just want to make sure that I have some other things here. Uh, you didn't do some of your community service. Is that correct? I did. Okay. Why not? Uh, you gave well, me an explanation. I did do some of Do some of it. You're right, but, but you didn't do all uh, of it. What happened? It was when I was um, I was reporting. That's right. When COVID broke out and I did community service in the office and um, they told me to stop coming to the office. I wasn't allowed to go in. and um, Because of COVID. Because of COVID. And from that point, I ended up, that's when I moved back to this area because I was in um, First, Tyler yeah. County. Yeah. And then uh, I moved back to this area and um, all that time during COVID, they weren't doing community service. So that's why I didn't do it until I got back here. And I just, then and that's when I didn't, COVID allowed me a little leeway and I, that's when I started a relapse. The most. And then that's when I didn't report. Through. And the final thing that I hear, the last allegation here is the drug test. You weren't taking drug tests because you weren't checking in. I just didn't, yeah. I went in one day and then I, I knew I was going to bill it and I just didn't go back. Anything else you want to tell the judge about the situation? Um, well, I did, when I was reading on this situation, when I was reinstated, I was, I passed all my UAs during that time, this recently. I wasn't on UAs and um, I was trying. I really was. And I had, I mean, when I, I did 12 months in jail and I got out and I got a job three weeks afterwards, I was building cabinets at another cabinet shop and just we're not having a car and not, I don't know. I just wasn't able to do like a lot of but um, I, um, I pass the shower. I have no questions of this witness, Judge. All right, go ahead. Well, that's um, all the witnesses we have. Sir, that's the only witness we have. Now. All right, what do y'all suggest? Defense? Your Honor, I would suggest a uh, reinstate her, let her check in and see if she can do this uh, because we're looking at four allegations here. Community service, I think COVID screwed her up and she got behind it. And when she stopped checking in, everything went you know, off the rails at that point. But I think if we let her start checking in again, uh, and showing she's clear, she's clean, she stays clean, she does community service, and we're back on track. I think we just need to uh, get her back on the track and, and move forward. I did not try this case, but Ms. Grove did, and I am aware that the only reason why Ms. Massey was given probation was because she testified in that case, your, your Honor may recall. You also may recall that the um, 
the defendant that was on trial, I believe, received a 99-year sentence from the jury, which goes hand in hand with the court's memory about how horrific these details are. I say all that to, to me, that's more than fair enough warning that if you're granted probation in that scenario, you know you're on thin ice. So despite that, she goes on probation and continues making mistakes, we'll say. She appeared, we filed a, our first motion to revoke probation on March 9th, 21, filed an amended as to that on May 12th to 21. And then she stood before this court and did similar to what she's doing today. And against my recommendation, and I'm not chastising the court, you gave her another opportunity, Judge. Yes, you get it sounds like chastisement to me. I just, no, I, 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 I'm like you, Judge. I like that you believe in people and you give them another opportunity. And that's that's the thing I want to highlight is she gave a similar pitch before. And you get and you you told her you chat you chastised her. You told her I don't want to see you again. And you gave her 120 days, and we put her back out on probation. She rewards that conduct by these statements that she just pled true to. This case in its severity and what all is involved here apparently is not enough to get her attention. It's not enough that she appeared before you, and I know you gave her the proper admonishments on the initial plea. And I know you gave her the proper admonishments again when you chose to allow her to work a again. The only thing I, the state's asking for in this is justice for these circumstances. I feel that 10 years is warranted. You know, I think that my client had something she'd like to say so in closing. Would you like to add anything? Go ahead. Yes. Um, I'd like to say that. When everything started, it was a result of my mother passing, and then and my life kind of just kind of rolled downhill. I've never been on drugs, and I've never been in trouble, and I've been a good mother. And I would try. I've been trying. I was tried last time. I really was trying. But I just, I, I didn't have a way. Like my truck got sold when I was in jail. I got out and I had nothing. I walked down the road and that's all I had was the clothes I had in my bag. I had nothing else. I have owned nothing in the world anymore, which is fine. I just, I was starting off at ground level when I, I fumbled because I felt overwhelmed. I didn't think it was going to be able to complete what was being asked to me because I don't have adequate transportation or I don't have a a great support service. I mean, I don't have no family. I have nobody. I have my kids and not, they need me. I don't, they need me to be there for them now. I haven't been, but they can't be there for me. I mean, I need, I can rebuild. I know I can. I've done it so many times. I've, I've, come, I've overcome so much, so many things in my life. I know I can do this. I know I can. I want this. I do. I know I can do better. And I'll be going back because I was living, I'm sorry. I was, I was tell living. me about, so you, you're telling me that drugs were never a problem? Yes, they were. Oh, uh, I thought I. No, I, I turned to drugs. No, I never said they were not. Oh, uh, okay. okay. I, don't, I thought that was really kind of the. The problem here. No, I'm just There's saying I was doing good this last time I was out that I, I wasn't on drugs. That's not why I'm back in jail. You, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to explain that. Yeah. We're talking about July, August, September, October. I mean, four, a block of four months. You've really kind of fallen off the radar screen for us. But when you're not reporting, you're not supervised. We don't know. All it is is your word. We really don't know what you're doing. Okay. We can't verify it, especially with the drug situation. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. I mean, this is. Go ahead. Do you, is there another program for drug rehabilitation other than JCDI? That is is that is on. Yeah. yeah. Could, I, I would, We've got a real strong program, but it's up. To, 
the probation office, they're the ones that that really make the decisions where they feel like uh, it's necessary and whether it's also warranted. I'd like to say the safe P is is something. Whenever I uh, when I get out, if whenever I go home this time, I will have a, a vehicle like accessible to me, so it won't be an issue like it was before. Like I didn't have or it wheels. At the probation office. The program that she's referring to, Your Honor, is JCDI. Mm -hmm. And in JCDI, we offer transportation. And we offer. Gosh, I'm you keep it. I'm sorry. I mean, we got in trouble when you were in kindergarten for that. We learned early in life. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. You get a chance to be heard. Now she's the one talking. She's going to interrupt. Thank you. Thank you. We do offer transportation. Ms. Massey will explain that by. Wesley Tucker, who was going to be her probation officer in the JCDI program. When I spoke to Ms. Massey last, she was adamant that she did not feel that she would be able to comply with the JCDI program. She said she was working and she just could not meet the requirements. What, so what requirements? Reporting to counselors, reporting to JCDI court, she was working. meeting your UAs um, on the color code. Whenever your color comes up, you have to go in and do a drug. What's different now? I mean, well, now, I mean, I don't have a job right off end, but I will have access to a vehicle, someone to bring me where I need to be. I don't have to look. For, I couldn't even, I was having a hard time finding rides to work and back home. And where do you live right now? In uh, I'll, a carriage park apartment. over here. In New York. Sorry. Oh. That's where the letter return that was sent to me. How long have you been living there? Uh, I lived there the whole time. According to jail records, they attempted to serve the warrant that location, and folks there said she hasn't lived there. When was it? Oh, I did. That's why. Okay, that's why I did leave there. I did leave there. I wasn't living there. That's right, and that's why I didn't have a vehicle because I didn't. Because that's why. Well, this just happened last year. Yes, right? sir. Uh, yes, it's, it was my boyfriend's mother's house. And I separated from him when I left. And that's why I lost my wheels and I was living with a friend of mine. Apparently, Your Honor, I apologize. Apparently, Your Honor, when she was arrested on the motion to revoke probation, she was additionally charged with a state jail possession of controlled substance and a failure to ID. That was not on my radar because we have not actually received that. That paperwork, but the uh, probation officer what was, was the allegation of the controlled substance, just the allegation. I know you're asking me what type, Judge. Give me one second. Oh, heroin, as well as uh, methamphetamine residue. Never done heroin. Well, that it's it's not charged, and, and is there a, a a scientific test that's been done on it, or no, no, no. just presume? Yeah. This is from. Uh, well, we can't. We're not going to hold that against you because it's, you're presumed innocent. Um, I, I wrote the article. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm, okay. But I am disappointed, just even if just being back here, if you just spit on the sidewalk, you just something minor like that for the seriousness. Uh, it's, and this crime is, there, there can't be a more valuable form of life or any. Or material good that you could have been charged with for this offense of tampering with physical evidence than a human body. I mean, that's about as that's the, of all the evidentiary items in the world we could think of a, a body, a human body. Tampering with that in an investigation is in, in the way this happened is about the most disgusting serious violation of such a crime. And this this was just a sordid 
despicable set of circumstances here. I was just hoping that I'd never get to see you again here on a revocation. I think I've been here. see me doing it. I know that's the disappointment is that you I, you probably can do that. I can't. I know I can't. Well, I don't think, I, I believe, just I can surmise that drugs are still haunting you. Right, what about so... uh, what about putting her in safety? She needs a she needs something that's if she's willing to do that, Your Honor. Yeah. Because yeah. with the JCD, I, I mean, that's that. some help for you. She did not want. But, but it's an inpatient. So it's not like you're working now, like you said. And this is you just asked me for some help and say, P. Oh, just asking if there was another person. <laughs> And safe P has been very productive and helpful. It has a good track record. So, are you willing to give safe P a shot, a full good effort, or not? It's your call. Please, I would like to ask if I could please try the JCDI and give it a good effort. I just asked you a question on a substance abuse felony punishment facility. It's helpful. It's effective. What would you possibly be afraid of? Um, you, you're not employed. You've got, a, you've got an opportunity to spend the next few months of your life helping yourself. But you would have to put a, a full faith effort. That's your, do you want to do that or not? It's your, it's your call. Because that's your option with me. Um, Speak to her a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Chat with her a little bit. So yeah. she understands the options. Yes, yes. Uh, it's just a very important decision here yes. that you're about to have to make. <clears throat> but I'm giving you a lifeline. And I'm urging you to consider it because the people I hear back, I get letters from the people in safety. They send me letters, and all those letters are very uh, positive about how it's helped them. But free will is still here you can make a choice what direction you want your life to head in it's your life i'm just giving you an opportunity of a of a path huh tommy roebuck let's get you are you asking something um, I don't have Sanchez here. This one they added on that I think was oh, here towards the beginning, Judge. Let me just tell you, this ain't going to work. <laughs> not on my eyes. This alone. is mm -mm. not going to work. This. All right. All right. I'm with you, Judge. Uh, why that wouldn't run by the courts just to, because we have to deal with it every day, but that is not workable. That's the <laughs> Okay, back uh, here to Ms. Massey. The file. All right, I think when we left off here, there was this motion to revoke probation that was pending. The court has found uh, or is going to find true these allegations one, two, three, and four that the defendant has pleaded true to, and now it becomes an issue of. Uh, What's what's going to happen here? I ask you to talk with uh, the defendant about uh, getting uh, help at substance abuse felony punishment facility, which is a good program that I have come to uh, know, not only by what I know, but the feedback by the direct letters sent to me of the defendants who overwhelmingly uh, expressed to me how, how uh, successful and better they feel about themselves from the time that they uh, spent that it's all quality time i know the way they they handle things in the facility and people do quite well not everybody is successful but it's overwhelming to where i am so very supportive of that program nonetheless free will is what it is and every defendant gets an opportunity we're not going to, those are valuable slots for people who want to help themselves. And if a defendant elects not to 
take that opportunity, it is uh, going to be awarded to someone else who wants to put forth a full effort. So, Ms. Massey, you've had an opportunity to discuss this with Mr. West and think about it, correct? Yes, sir. All right, what do y'all want to do? She's, she says no to safety, Your Honor, and we're just going to go to the court and let the court determine whatever punishment the court determines is best. All right, then. Uh, anybody want to add anything else? At this point, Your Honor, I would uh, request, uh, I know it's up to 10 years, but I would request some leniency on this case, uh, considering the factors that you've already heard, if you could. Uh, uh, some somewhere less than the 10 of 10, Your Honor. And I'm sure Mr. Uh, Ham is going to request 10. And, He's uh, already done. That. Oh, I, I know. I know. I, I, I absolutely understand. You know, I talked about it too, so we know, but we would request some kind of uh, uh, mercy uh, uh, as a number less than 10, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. Anything else by anybody? How about you, ma'am? Would you like to add anything to what you told me already, Ms. Masson? As far as um, myself, I mean, I know that I'm a great asset to the community. I can help them. And do good things. I know I can. It's in me. Yes, sir. And I don't want to disappoint you. Like I really, I, I think I it's. Know. I I believe it is. I think you are capable. I know I am. But I don't, you've got to. I got to put do it into it, imp implement it into actual. I've grown since be before. I'm I'm further. You know what I mean. I've grown in a good mentally, way. Emotionally, and in a good way. In a great way. Good. And I have nowhere to go but up from here. Okay. So strong now. I wasn't. I was weak. I was mourning and I had a lot of stuff going on. Ms. Jones, uh, anything you would like to add on behalf of the probation office on, on this case? <clears throat> you know, I feel that Ms. Massey has to realize that she cannot make decisions that will benefit her um, from herself. She has to take directions from other people who see what she cannot see. And this is the second motion to revoke probation. And it's the same behaviors um, that's attributed to her being in custody now. And she wants to do probation on her own terms. Mm -hmm. And that won't be successful. She she could be a, a, a productive citizen, but she has to be treated for her substance abuse. And she's not willing to do that. Anything else? All right, if nothing further, I'm going to make the following findings that there is sufficient evidence supporting this motion to revoke probation to grant it by a preponderance of the evidence or greater as allegations one, two, three, and four have been proven true by a preponderance of the evidence or greater. And this motion to revoke probation is granted. You have already uh, been found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this offense placed on probation and that was not successful. Therefore, your uh, punishment is assessed at five years in prison in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. You'll be given credit for time you have served. That's not to say that uh, the state's, Mr. Han's recommendation is not a good idea and fair under these circumstances. The, the evidence that was tampered with is the most precious item on this planet, one of God's creatures. And this whole fiasco was a, a pathetic, terrible, sordid evil set of circumstances. In your case, as I've reviewed again and reflected, there's nothing to show that you did shoot the body. There is nothing that shows that uh, you harmed the victim while alive, but you did take an active part in trying to destroy the evidence and the uh, incineration of a human body uh, is about as low and unhumane method of dealing with a fellow human being. And uh, thus, punishment should be serious. And this court feels like under these circumstances, 
this is uh, the uh, appropriate method under this set of circumstances. Anything else? That is all. Thank you. Mr. West, uh, Desmond Williams, did you have that one still left? Yes, Your Honor. 